So today we're gonna to look at one of the kind of cheaper Chinese uh, desktop extruders that you can get a hold of and uh, let you know about it. So this is the S25 extruder. You can generally find it on like AliExpress or even Alibaba and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's some variations of it. I believe there's the 35, which has more heating zones, but they're pretty much the same machine. They have a one horsepower motor on the back, and then they have a cooling fan at the beginning to make sure that the heat does not creep back up to where your uh, beads are actually melting or getting started and entering into the screw. It is a single screw extruder. You have the die and nozzle on the front, which is basically a, a very simple, this almost looks like a wheel hub that you can get off of hardware from like the MasterCard. Uh, but this die has a 1.75 hole drilled into it so that you're able to extrude uh, standard filament that way. Um, and then you mount it with these four screws. It is powered uh, by 110 voltage. You can get it at a 220, but ultimately it's a very simple machine. You have the, the PLCs for controlling the individual heating zones, and then you have the extruder feed speed there. We got this machine last year uh, in order to experiment with it because we do a lot of testing of new filament when we're making it for our print farms. So we wanted a small machine that was reasonably low cost so that we could try different colors and try different materials. And many of the US options were just really expensive for that kind of testing. Uh, check out our Philobot video here. But the, we got this because we wanted to find out where it sat. And it seemed like it wouldn't be that hard to make. It's a single screw with a motor on the back that has to melt stuff fairly quickly. It's a very simple machine. This machine does not work at all. Uh, we have turned it on and we operated it when it first came through. Uh, it is not physically able to extrude any filament whatsoever. Um, it is almost not physically able to heat up to temperature. It has a very long heat up time. Um, and when it did finally reach temp in the four zone or in the two or three zones that we set there in order to melt PLA, which has a very low melting temperature, um, it was not able to extrude at any sort of speed. It was so slow that with the filament coming out, it would basically sag and deform before you could even start pulling it onto a spool. So you could technically take this and mount it upside down so that it extrudes straight down and maybe it could cool quickly enough. But with a gravity fed system like that, you have no control of filament diameter in a reasonable sort of way. So, and we don't wanna to have to deal with that. We don't have time for that. We're running hundreds of 3D printers. We don't have to need to diddle with a low cost desktop extruder. Um, this is not a machine that I would recommend anybody get a hold of. It is quite literally just been a waste of money to us, um, but it's something that we are considered worth the experimentation because you do not learn about a new machine or a new process unless you actually give it a shot. Uh, so hopefully this video helps us recoup some of the cost of this machine and prevents anybody else from really wasting their time and money with it because it's just functionally unusable. Uh, while it looks fine and fundamentally it's not hard to make an extruder except to machine the screw itself, this just does not work. And I don't know how anybody could get any sort of useful work out of it. Um, but these types of machines are made for such a select few who want to afford it and want to do the experimentation um, and are really looking for a budget cost that there's not a lot of feedback on how they actually perform. So we wanted to make sure that there was information got out there about this machine um, so that nobody else really wastes their time. Let us know down in the comments if there's other sorts of machines or devices around 3D printing that you'd like us to take a look at. Uh, we have a lot of access to it because we run these large print farms where we get to experiment with this kind of stuff. Um, and let us know if there's other topics about 3D printing or mass production 3D printing that you'd like us to cover here. Have a great day, everybody.